go right over the fish. St. Stephen's Episcopal Church, whether you're joining us here in person or online, when you came in today, you should have received one of these uh, in the handout in the back, because everything you will need to worship with us this morning, as well on the back with a list of announcements. A few highlights uh, for you. Uh, this month, we do have a couple of special things coming up. Ascension Day, May 26th, which is uh, 40 days after Easter, because of the Book of Acts, Jesus.
Jesus ascended into heaven 40 days after the resurrection. So, 40 days on Thursday, May 26, 6.30 p.m. here in the church, we have a service uh, in honor of the ascension. And just an interesting traditional factoid about the Feast of the Ascension, in case you did not know, the first three days before the Ascension, the Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, are known as Rogation Days. And Rogation Days are a traditional time to bless uh, gardens and fields and things like that. So, um, I will, uh, leading up to that day, I'll we'll make sure there's some holy water here in the church. I will come out and bless your garden for you, but I'm at a, I'm, I will end up, I will be at a um, clergy retreat those three days. Uh, but I'll leave some holy water out. You can go out to your yard, ask God for some blessings on whatever garden you have, and sprinkle some holy water around. It is a tradition on those days. There are also traditional fasting days. I'll send out some more information to about that on the email. But some interesting tradition for you to do at home. But May 26th, Feast of the Ascension. And then Friday, May 27th, our um, Feast of Blessed Gerard, which, are, which we do our annual 1928 prayer book, Holy Communion. Uh, so please be sure to join us Friday, May 27th, 6.30 p.m. here for 1928 Prayer Book Holy Communion service. Don't miss that. Um, normal reminders coming up. Our Men's Addiction and Recovery Group Monday at 6, Wednesday evening prayer at 6.30. And then for all other announcements, please sign up for our newsletter. We have a QR code on the back. And there's also one in the link, or there's a link for that in the description to this video. is risen. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, the heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, the Son of the Father, that takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Thou that takes away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the good shepherd of thy people, Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he doth lead. Who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth one God forever and ever. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul. And guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to thee, O Lord. The 10th chapter, beginning at the 22nd verse. It was the festival of the dedication of Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What the Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, o Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The wilderness of Judea is not an easy and hospitable place to walk or to live or to make a living of any sort. And yet, for a sizable portion of people during the time of Jesus and even today, they made their living as shepherds out in the wilderness. Now it's true that in some ways the area of Israel was more, at least more lush, had some more vegetation at the time of Jesus and the time of King David than it does now. But it was not ever the rolling green hills of Ireland. Perhaps we imagine shepherding as uh, an easy job. Maybe we've only seen pictures. I know I have. Images, pictures. I did see a sheepdog demonstration once at the Texas Irish Festival, and that was about it. I don't have any experience there, so maybe we imagine it was a nice, easy, kind of peaceful job where you sit out there and watch sheep graze every day. But it wasn't, particularly not for the shepherds at the time, particularly not in the ancient world. See, the wilderness was full of dangers. Instead of rolling green hills, there was a lot of dirt, scrubby grass. Sheep couldn't just wander off and find a place for food. They couldn't just find water. The shepherd had to know where the food was, had to know where the water was. In addition to that, there were ravines, crevices, valleys. It was easy to get lost or fall in one. There was caves everywhere. And caves have wild animals, wolves, lions during the time of King David. Believe it or not, Israel, as we remember in the story of David, we can skip over that part, but it is true, ancient Israel had lions that used to be a little bit more common everywhere. Or maybe humans. Maybe humans were even the worst one, bandits. There were a lot of dangers in the Judean wilderness. Lots of ways for sheep to get themselves injured or killed. And the Bible describes us as sheep. Not as lions. The Bible doesn't say we're lions. It says we're sheep. And see... In the spiritual world, in our spiritual life, if we talk about Christian spirituality, if we talk about relig 
religion in general. Sometimes we are tempted to imagine spirituality as rolling green hills. Maybe we're tempted to think it's a nice, simple, easy thing. You just sort of show up, you just sort of do it, and if you wander off, it's not a problem. If you wander off, you can't get lost, you'll just find more water and grass somewhere else. Maybe we imagine the spiritual life is not full of dangers. But I think intuitively, we know it is. We know there are bad versions of spirituality out there. We know there are ways that religion has been abused throughout history. We know there are toxic versions of both. We know there are unhealthy and harmful versions of both. And yet I think that sometimes we figure it won't happen to us. We won't fall into that. We won't fall into a cult or whatever. We won't end up down one of those dark paths. We certainly will not end up in a valley of shadow of death, into a ravine, into a cave, finding the rabid wolves. And I think the reason God calls us sheep is because it's exactly what we're likely to do. It's exactly what we're likely to do. The spiritual world can be dangerous. Religion can be dangerous doesn't mean it's bad, but it can be dangerous. And we need a guide. We need a protector. We need a shepherd. So one thing I learned about sheep this past week is apparently sheep are fairly intelligent. I used to think they weren't that smart. Apparently they have about the IQ of a pig. Pigs are actually fairly smart. But they scare easily and they have no depth perception. So if something spooks them, if something scares them, they might run off and trip into one of these ravines and then they're stuck because now they can't get out. And that's the image that Psalm 23 is actually painting. A lost sheep away from the flock. Right? Sheep are flock animals. Why would the psalmist say, talk about himself in first person like this? He's away from the flock. The sheep has gone off by itself. The sheep has decided it can wander off and do as it pleases. It'll wander off and explore things away from the shepherd, away from everyone else. And it's ended up in a ravine. And so, the psalmist, in this moment of emotional agony that he's going through when he writes this psalm, Describes himself as of this sheep. As this sheep that is perhaps lost, that is confused, that is in the valley of the shadow of death. I mean, in one of those many valleys that, that, that tears across the Judean landscape. That it, one can get lost and injured and die in. Things aren't feeling so great right now. He's in the ravine. And he needs a way out. God might guide us in our spiritual life, but what happens when we take a wrong turn? What happens when we end up in a spiritual ravine? What happens when we face spiritual wolves and lions and snakes and bandits? What happens when things get way out of hand? We need a shepherd. And so the psalmist describes God coming in with a rod and a staff. Your rod and your staff comfort. The shepherd has found his sheep. The shepherd has gone off and left, as Jesus said, leave the 99 sheep behind to go off and find the one. And that's what God does. And God has found the sheep in the ravine. And the sheep finds God's staff and rod comforting. Why? Because this is guidance and protection. The shepherd's rod was not used to discipline the sheep. It was used to protect the sheep. 
Apparently, shepherds would throw them at wild animals that were coming in. You could actually, apparently the wolves, would, they could toss it at them. I didn't know that either. I, I would think you'd lose what you tossed it. But apparently, that is what shepherds do. That's what I, that the website I found on how to shepherd sheep said to do that. You throw it at the wild animals coming at the, at coming at the sheep to get them to run away. You can spook them that way. Or you can just beat off the wolves. God comes in to protect the sheep. Protect the sheep from these spiritual dangers. The sheep can't do it themselves. We are not individual, autonomous, spiritual units that can do everything ourselves. Strap ourselves by our own spiritual bootstraps and do it myself. God doesn't say you're a lion. God says you're a sheep. The shepherd comes in with the rod. The shepherd does the defending. The shepherd beats back the wolves. The sheep can't do it. And the sheep need to be guided. And so the shepherd has the staff, the, 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 the crook, to grab the sheep and move him along, particularly when the sheep are being stubborn. Maybe the sheep finds another ravine. Maybe the wolf comes up out of nowhere and the sheep is likely to get startled and spooked again and run down another ravine. And God can stop you. Say, so don't do that. Stop running off. Stop worrying about the wolves yourself. I am here. I can take care of that. Stop thinking you can wander off and find the place where you need to go yourself. Let me guide you. God says, I, I am the shepherd, God says. I've got a rod, I've got a staff, I'll get you out of here. I'll bring you out of this shadow of death, this valley of death, this valley where you have found the wolves and the bandits and the snakes and the lions. I'll get you out of here. And so God brings his rod and staff and the sheep is comforted. Of course, for the sheep to get out, he needs to follow the shepherd, right? How does the psalm start? You lead me beside still waters. You lead me. Sometimes in the Christian life, I think we make a mistake in thinking that we don't need to be led anywhere. Maybe you think you've arrived. Maybe you think that you, you, you graduated, right? You, have, you, you were confirmed. You've graduated. You've learned a little bit about the Bible. You're done. You've arrived. Maybe you think it's over. It's, it's, it's complete. Maybe you think there's just nowhere to be led. Things are fine where they are. Things are great where they are. Why would I want to walk anywhere? Why would I want to go anywhere? Why would... I want to be led anywhere. Why would I want to follow? It's interesting, isn't it? The Bible continues to call us sheep who follow, not lions who make their own way. Not only do we have to go somewhere else, not only do sheep not stay in the sheep pen, sheep do not stay in one spot the whole time, but they don't even get to decide where they go. The shepherd does, with the help of a sheepdog or two. I've seen that demonstration. But the shepherd guides. The shepherd leads. The sheep have to follow the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me beside still waters. The Judean wilderness, where there's water and food, are few and far between sometimes. If the sheep were to just wander off by themselves, they're not likely to find it. If they were to do just whatever they wanted, they may not find food and water at all. Or they might get attacked by wolves and spook and scatter and end up who knows where and separated from the flock and then find something else. It would not go well for those sheep if they decided not to follow the shepherd. So we have to be led. And the only way to be led by the shepherd, as Jesus then later says, is to hear his voice. We 
have to hear his voice. I watched one other video about shepherding. There are all sorts of things about shepherding. Of a group of sheep. And, and they had different people go up, and they were all tourists, give out the command for the sheep to come. And the sheep ignored all of them. And the shepherd gets up there and casually gives the command once, and all the sheep perk up, and a whole flock out of nowhere runs towards the shepherd. Sheep actually do learn the shepherd's voice. They do actually learn to recognize when the shepherd is speaking and not someone else. If we want God to lead us, if we want those still waters, if we want those grassy fields, if we want the food and water, if we do not want to end up in a ravine, or even worse, if you've already entered a ravine, if you are there now, if you've already found yourself falling into one, and you want out, you have to follow the shepherd, and therefore you have to learn his voice. Sheep aren't born knowing the shepherd's voice. They learn it. How do they learn it? By listening to by seeing what the other sheep of the flock are doing, by getting that register, by understanding when it's from the shepherd and not, they experience. It's only experience they can learn the shepherd's voice. And probably not surprising to have a priest say this, but there's nothing overly complicated about this. There's not going to be any kind of weird secret technique. I'm not going to give you an esoteric a uh, system of who knows what. If you want to learn the shepherd's voice, you have to talk to the shepherd. Prayer and scripture. Prayer and the Bible. That's how we learn the shepherd's voice. St. Jerome once said that prayer is how we speak to God and the Bible is how God speaks to us. How do you learn the shepherd's voice? By listening to it. By listening to what we know to be the shepherd's voice to begin with. By reading scripture. By studying scripture. By spending time in prayer. And letting the scripture and our prayer time impact our hearts. Not just running through the prayers. Not just doing it to do it like you might do a morning stretch and not thinking about it. But prayer, using prayer as a time to talk to God. Using your scripture reading as a time to listen to God speak to you. We have to learn the shepherd's voice. And I get that, you know, as we offer Bible studies from time to time, not all of them fit into everyone's schedule. But if we want to listen to the shepherd's voice, we have to be spending time in Scripture. There has to be a place where you go, I may have been confirmed a long time ago, but I'm going to study the Bible now. I know I've been a Christian or Episcopalian for decades, but I still need to study the Bible now. I still have to make sure I'm hearing the shepherd's voice. I still have to make sure I'm learning to discern the difference between it and some other voice that might come in later and lead me off into a ravine. There's never a time to stop talking to God. There's never a time to stop having God speak to you. We speak to God in prayer, and God speaks to us in Scripture. The Judean wilderness is indeed dangerous. The spiritual life really isn't that much different. The religious life can have its own dangers. We can have our own lions and snakes and bandits. Which is why we need a shepherd. We need the only shepherd, which is God. 
We need Jesus to come into the valley with his rod and staff to beat back the wolves and to guide us back to his green pastures. We need to learn to listen to his voice if we want to find the still waters. We need to learn to follow the shepherd. To him be the glory, now and forever. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the God Father before all worlds, God, God, light, light, very God, very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for us stand and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost and the Virgin Mary and was made man. And was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is saved by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. They may be faithful ministers of thy word and sacraments.
they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for those who are ill or have other needs, especially Linda, Wyatt, Jason, Dummy, Joy, Alan, Charlie, Joel, Craig, Helen, Grace, Jack, Cynthia, Mike, Kim, Fernando, Diane, Kelly, Sarah, Wayne, Warner, Taya, Roman, Charlotte, Peace of the Lord be always with you. For our offertory this morning, we do have offering plates in the back of the church on two tables. Before you leave today, please support the life, ministry, and worship of St. Stephen's. And if you're joining us online, we have a link to donate in the description for this video, as well as a QR code that should pop up on the screen. And if you're here and you're tech savvy, we also have a QR code printed in the handout so you can get on your phone during the offertory as well. Now, strive to the Lord, we honor you his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Be lifted up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very neat, right, and our bounding duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the very paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again hath won for us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for the vow of thy tender mercy is give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who may thereby as one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory and enact his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For the night which he had betrayed, he took bread. And when he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. His mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and that thy almighty goodness, that thou shape to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, and in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully, to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer presented to the old, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, and that he may dwell in us and me in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in the unity of the Holy Ghost our honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen.
now, as our Savior Christ had taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We do not presume to come to this thy table of merciful Lord, trusting our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always thy mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may ever more dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries when the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness toward us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs of hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom we be the Holy Ghost, be our honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.